Hi there and welcome to another lunchtime row. As always, these aren't rows that you have to do over your lunchtime. You can do them at any point in the day when you have around about 25 minutes free and you want to do a little bit of exercise. Now today's workout is going to be 25 minutes long and it's one that can have many faces because we're going to do four minutes at 20 strokes a minute followed by one minute worth of drills. And it's those four minutes that can change how this workout feels because you can do it at a low, a mid or a high intensity. This version I'm going to do at a low intensity and I'll talk more about why as we get into the main row, okay? Now because we're rowing this at a low intensity, I'm not going to do a warm-up. We're going to go straight into the 25 minutes. I hope that's okay with you. Now before we actually get started, we have to set up our machines. On the Averon, that means turning it on and setting your resistance. Now I would normally do a low intensity warm-up with it set to 7, but because I'm doing the full thing, I've got it set up at 10. But you of course set it where you want it to be. If you're using the Concept2 Averon app, set your drag factor to where you want it to be. If you don't know anything about drag factor, do read up on it, but for the time being, set your lever to run about five, because too high is the problem here, too low is okay. So five, good ballpark, all right? Next up, set your foot stretcher height so that the straps cover the bottom lace of your shoe, which is likely to be the balls of your feet. And that's kind of the ballpark for where you want the straps to cover, because that will let you come into the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position comfortably. If you're set too high, it can be a bit too tough to get there. If you're set too low, you can go scooting straight past, all right? So we're about to get ready, so make sure and have a quick drink. Get yourself uh, nice and comfortable on the seat, and then we're going to get started at 20 strokes a minute at a low intensity in five, four, three, two, one, and we're off. Now, because we're starting right from scratch here, don't worry too much about your intensity on this first chunk, if you want to call it that. Just push with the legs as though you're just engaging your body with the machine. You're not putting in too much force. You're not kind of working to a point where you know you're going to suffer after 20 minutes. This is meant to be a low intensity, gentle workout. So what will happen is that maybe about two minutes into this, you're gonna feel that your heart rate is starting to increase and your breathing rate is starting to increase, but then it should kind of hold at that point. I kind of describe the sensation of these low intensity workouts as though you were walking up a constant flight of stairs, okay? So you know that way you just start to get out of breath because it gets, a little bit of hard work, but it's not actually hard work. <laughs> and the other way to describe it is whether you're able to speak or sing while you're rowing. If you can, then it means that you're running about the right intensity. If you have to stop taking big gulps of air, then you're going too hard, all right? So it's a good way to gauge it. If I was doing this as a training plan, then I'd kind of say this pace would be round about 2K plus 18. Don't worry if you don't know that stuff. We'll get to that when we get into some of my plans on here, okay? <sighs> right, so we're two minutes in to this first four minute chunk and hopefully you've got your body moving enough that I can start to talk a little bit about positions and technique. Don't worry, we've got 25 minutes together. I'm not gonna bore you with the, <laughs> the whole 25 minutes of technique, but we just need to cover this first and every now and then just to make sure that you're not uh, doing anything that's kind of making your workout less effective. So the first thing to think about is your body position, your upper body, which you want to tilt forwards to the front of the machine. As you start the stroke, then you hold that tilt as you push with your legs. And then at the back of the machine, you swing to round about 11 o'clock on the clock face. 
So from one o'clock forwards, 11 o'clock backwards. And you really do want to think about swinging over your hips. So you lean forwards, swing back. It's like a hinge going forwards and backwards, like a pendulum, a hinge, a swing. <laughs> I'll use all the words to try and convey to you how you're just meant to be swinging forwards and backwards in a nice rhythm. And then what we're going to do is as we hit this one minute of drills that's coming up, we'll work on this hip swing, but also break the stroke down into its main two component parts. So one more stroke and then keep your legs straight. And all I want you to do is roll with your back and arms. So legs are nice and straight. Don't worry if they bend a little bit, but you tilt forwards and then swing with the back first to pick up the weight of the machine. That point when you feel the handle connect to the machine. So back rock first, then pull in the arms, then out with the arms and rock forwards. One more here. And then let's roll into the front of the machine, arms straight, forwards tilt, and just push with your legs. Okay? Hold those arms straight. If you have difficulty thinking about this forwards tilt and arms straight at the same time, just concentrate on one of them, okay? But I'd prefer it if you concentrated on keeping your arms straight as you pushed with your legs. One more here, and let's get back into rowing. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. Four minutes worth of rowing, and then we're just gonna do those drills. If you've done any of my other workouts that include the warm-up, then you'll have done those drills already anyway. So you're used to it. But if you're not, don't worry about it. We're going to get to do five of these drill sessions and hopefully by the end of this workout you'll have them nicely stored in your muscles so that you'll know what to do. Because really the important part is at this drive thinking about the push with the legs because that's where the power comes from. Maybe You've always thought that rowing is about pulling with your arms, but it's not. It's about pushing with your legs to really accelerate in that power to the machine. Especially on a machine like this, where the more power you put in, the more of a resistance you feel against it. It's really important to push with your legs and really load up that weight. And the power comes from your legs up through your body, into your arms, into the handle. And then by keeping your arms straight, that power floods into the machine. And then you can finish, you can top it up at the back of the stroke by then pulling in with your arms. If you pull from the front, you basically just fight against your legs, lose a whole bunch of power, and it's a much less effective workout of nothing else. But you'll also notice you're not going as fast. <laughs> so my whole thing when it comes to rowing is trying to help you get the most efficient row possible so that you can row either as fast as you want or as long as you want or, well, as fast as you want for as long as you want but also to reduce the risk of injury and so by having a flowing stroke moving in and out of the right body angles and positions you're less likely to get injured if you're just yanking on the handle from the front of the machine all the time, 
chances are you'll end up with upper back pain from that tension you're creating. And you're just not gonna get as good a workout. Like you might have read somewhere that rowing is a like 85% all over body workout. It's only that if you remember to push with your legs, engage your core at the front, hold that forwards tilt as long as you can, swing your back and then pull in with your arms. It's got a lot that goes into it in order to use all 85% of your muscles. All right, our next drill section is coming up after this stroke. So legs straight and row with your back and arms. So like I said, you pick up the initial tension by swinging back and then pulling in your arms, but you do the reverse as you come forwards. So arms away, rock forwards. Arms away, rock forwards. Let the momentum of your arms going straight be what triggers your rock forwards, okay? Now let's roll into the front with straight arms, forwards tilt, push out with your legs. And what you're looking for here is to push with your legs at the same time the handle bites into the machine. You get what I mean by that, don't you? When you feel you've connected to whatever mechanism is in your machine. Let's do one more. I'm slightly out of time here, but we're good. Back into full rowing, 20 strokes a minute at that nice low intensity. In fact, oh, I don't have my heart rate running to tell you what my heart rate is, but I can tell just from the fact that I'm quite happily talking away and I can even tell by how much I'm not sweating. Sorry to take it down to base levels and talk about bodily functions, but I can tell about nice low intensity. I mean, I know what my warm-up pace is on this machine anyway, when I'm set to level 10. And that's kind of what I'm rowing at right now. So all the data in front of you could obviously be used to let you know how fast you're going when you're trying to really perform, but heart rate and your 500 meter splits and watts, they're all there to let you control your session. And what you're looking for is the control of stroke rate, a control of power. And that way you know that you're working at the right intensity, but also you're working with the right consistency. So you want to see your stroke rate really at the same numbers for a workout like this. Because after all, 20 strokes a minute is just one stroke every three seconds. So you can just look at your timer and take one stroke every three seconds, you know you'll be hitting 20 strokes a minute. But then when you look at your pace, or even your watts. If you've got the graph showing your watts, you want your power output to be as consistent as possible. And that's why I keep banging on about technique. Whereas if you have a smooth, consistent technique from stroke to stroke, then it's much easier to have a consistent power output. And once you learn how to control your power output, that's when you can really take charge of your own training and know whether you're working at a low intensity, a medium intensity, or a max intensity. (laughs) 
And that's what I was meaning in the intro about the different ways you can row this session. Is that you can row at this pace, you could add in a little bit more power, maybe like 10 seconds per 500 meters faster to really take the intensity up. But you don't quite feel you're at maximum, especially with these one minute drill sections after every four minutes. Or you could go absolute max pressure where you're just putting everything into every stroke and inevitably by the end of each four minute chunk you'll find your pace might start to drop away a little bit but then allow you to go fast again at the end of that four minutes. Okay, one more stroke, back to drills. Leg straight, roll with your back and arms. And remember, on this one, it's all about that pivot. Pivot forwards, pivot backwards. Just swing over your hips. This isn't about rolling your lower back and curving, just hinging forwards and backwards. So important. One more here. Roll into the front, arm straight, force tilt. Press out with your legs. And really keep those arms straight. I want this drill to really teach you about pushing with your legs, with arms straight, for the first half of your stroke. Okay? Connecting at the front, using your legs, not using your arms. One more. Alrighty, back into normal rowing. Woo! So, if you're wearing a heart rate monitor, which weirdly I'm wearing two and neither of them are turned on, <laughs> then what you should see is that your heart rate during these work sessions will probably climb a bit, but not too high if you're doing this at a low intensity. And then the one minute drill sections, you'll possibly recover run about 10 beats per minute over that minute before going back up again. And for this intensity, that's really all you're looking for. If you start to do this at higher intensities, then you'll see your heart rate will drift throughout the workout in a more upwards line and possibly not recover that much over the one minute worth of drills. <sighs> but this version is the nice low intensity. And it really is, this one's perfect for a day when your body needs a recovery day, an active workout though. So it's not a total rest day. It's like maybe, maybe you row five days a week, and yesterday's workout was a max intensity, but you still need to do some exercise today, then this is the perfect kind of workout for you. Because you're still moving, but you're also keeping it at a nice low intensity to allow your body to recover after the workout the day before, and it means that you'll be able to follow this one, possibly with a medium intensity, just like a hard workout, not a maximum workout. And then maybe you take a rest day. You know you, you know your body, what you're able to do throughout the day and the week. So just make sure and be sensible. There's no point climbing onto the machine for two weeks, going absolutely max intensity every single day, and then at the end of the two weeks, you can hardly move because you just not let your body recover enough. Because there's no, it really isn't, or, or it's very hard, let's put it that way, to overtrain. 
unless you're a professional athlete training for like eight to 10 hours a day, it's really hard to overtrain, but it's really easy to under recover, to not give your body chances to just recover, whether that's by changing the intensity you work at or by making sure to give your body at least one day a week full recovery where you don't do any intense exercise or even this kind of exercise. Just let your body repair and recover for at least one day of the week. Okay, two strokes. One more. And we're back into drills. So roll with your back and arms. Swing back, pull in, arms out, swing forwards. Keep that rock forwards and backwards. And really think about the arms away and rocking forwards. And notice I'm not holding in at the back. That's a totally different drill. I'm keeping the flow going. Let's roll into the front, arm straight, forwards tilt, push out with the legs. Now just as an indicator, when I'm doing this part of the drill, I'm round about a minute slower per 500 meters than I am in the main row. So don't worry if you're not trying to keep the pace the same like your watts or whatever. One more. And let's get back into rowing. And you know, the other reason to mix up the variety of your workouts, whether that's from day to day or even within the workout itself, is just that variety keeps things interesting. If you're just doing the same session every single day, then it just starts to get monotonous and you start to kind of, instead of looking forward to the workout, it's something that you have to endure. You're like, oh, another high intensity, 40 minute interval workout again, again, again. And so that's why you'll find I tend to mix up the sessions I do as much as possible. And certainly when it comes to this video format, you get the added danger of you start to kind of say, it's like, you know what I'm about to say before I do, if this is a workout that you do every single day. And trust me, I have no idea what's about to come out of my mouth. So if you do, you're certainly a step better than me. I'm sure I probably should script these things, have an idea what I'm gonna talk about, but makes it as much a surprise to me as it is to you <laughs> when I make these videos. Anyway, right, so on track, sorry. This is the last of our four minutes. So hopefully not only are you thinking about consistency of your pace, but I'm hoping that you're also rolling in the techniques that we're doing in these drill sections into the row itself. So maybe, maybe you don't row by keeping straight arms at the front. Maybe you don't hold that forwards tilt at the front. Maybe you don't get your arms away first. Well, hopefully these drills that we're doing is letting you see 
how useful that is, not only to your stroke, but your workout experience. And you're now starting to add that into your actual technique. Because like I say, if you can row with an efficient technique, you'll be able to row longer. And the longer the, you're able to row, the fitter you'll become, the more energy you'll burn, and hopefully the healthier you'll feel as a result. Okay, we're coming up for our final minute. Now, when I'm chatting and saying goodbye at the end, do some light rowing, okay? One more stroke here, and let's get back into our last drills. So rowing with the back and arms. And the other thing to say, probably a bit late, but I don't want to give you too much info, is really to think about your posture. Keep a good posture here. You're not rolling your lower back. That's why I keep on saying pivoting over your hips, hinging forwards and backwards. You can only do that with a good posture, okay? One more here. Let's roll into the front and push out with the legs while holding your arms straight and that forwards tilt. Think about that timing. You want your legs to press at the same time your hands connect. And that way you'll put in all of your leg drive to the machine instead of your backside escaping from underneath you. Let's take one more. Finish with a flourish. Now, like I said, if you want to do a cool down, then either hunt out my actual cool down I've got uh, uploaded up here or just do some light, oops, some light rowing while I say goodbye. Oh, sorry, noisy foot straps. Back of these shoes always get caught in the, in the back of the heel cup. There we go. So that was the low intensity version of the uh, four minutes at 20 and one minute worth of drills. So do look out for the medium or kind of mid hard version of this and then the max version of this as well because they are two completely different kinds of workouts. This is a nice gentle one, those other two are not quite as easy. All right, so thank you so much for joining me for today's row. Remember, if you're gonna post on your socials about this row, you can use a hashtag, and today's hashtag is many faces, okay? Because this is a row of many faces. I'll hopefully see you in another workout. Until then, take care, be well, bye-bye.